everybody, Lord Tremendous here, and I know you saw that intro, right? Was that not the coolest? Yeah, Unleashed Wargaming did that for me. Dude is a genius, and it's official, he is now my favorite. So, yeah. Not only can this dude paint amazing models and make amazing magic cards, but he did an incredible intro for me now and yeah that's my new intro that's there's no it's not a vote this is not a democracy that is so cool <laughs> i know i know i'm way too excited over an intro thing but it is so cool so yeah yeah there's gonna be a little format change and there it is so how awesome is that uh so yeah that's gonna be the battle report it was fun bye guys okay <laughs> No, this is uh, a 3,000 point battle, battle report number 181, using all of the Legion rules. This is the first game that I've ever played with uh, the new Kane magic rules and everything, so, you know, we all have Lore Master, we use the 46 and everything, and, uh, well, I'm going to show you how it went, because that's kind of my thing. Uh, but it was me, Lord Tremendous of the Undead Legion, versus Super Carl Franz of the Empire. And yeah, he's got Carl Franz Ascended in here. This is my typical uh, Empire opponent, and he, he liked the, the rules for uh, Carl Franz Ascended, so he's using him, and there's nothing wrong with that. So get ready to see how this one comes. There's like three firsts in this one. The first time using Kane Magic, the first time seeing Super Carl Franz, and the first time with the awesome intro! Oh, I love it so much. Anyway, yeah, here comes a report. Are you ready for a war? Here's my list, and it has changed slightly, so get ready. I still have my Vampire Lord, Lord Tremendous. He's still on an Abyssal Terror with Poisonous Claw or Poisonous Tail and Sword Claws. He's still a level 3 wizard with Heavy Armor, Sword of Antiheroes, Enchanted Shield, Talisman of Preservation, Other Trickster Shard, Red Fury, Quick Blood, and the Lore of Undeath, because that's as awesome as I can make this guy. I also have a level 4 Lich High Priest, Queen Elizabeth. She's a level 4 wizard, Dispel Scroll, Seed of Rebirth, and the Lore of Nehekhara. I've added a Vampire, Dark Vincent, who's a level 1 wizard with Heavy Armor Shield, Severger's Hex Scroll, and the Lore of Vampires, because I figure with all the casters out there nowadays and all the crazy cane magic spells, I can let an inconsequential spell through and possibly turn the level 4 into a frog, which would put a serious dampener on his huge magic phase and make it really easy to kill the bastard. So that's the idea, because it stops all... If the spell works, if the scroll works, of course you got to roll like a 5 or a 6, you end up, you know, turning him into a frog, all of his magic gear stops working, all of his stats, with the exception of wounds, goes to 1, and he's got to roll, granted, under his uh, levels or whatever in, in the beginning of every other magic phase in order to dispel it. But for a turn, he's completely useless. Like, completely. So, I thought that might be kind of cool. And, you know, this is just me trying to adapt to the new magic phase ideas. So, that's why I brought the scroll. It's a 50-point point sink, I know, but I wanted to try it. Then, of course, I have my Tomb Prince, Sinister Jeffrey. He's a great weapon wielding, armor of silvered steel bearing, luckstone using basically weapon skill 5 to my skeleton, guys. That, that's why he's in there. And, you know, the armor of silvered steel with a luckstone makes him pretty durable. And then, of course, I've got my Necrotech, the Architect. Uh, he's got the Tormentor Sword, Dragon Helm, and Iron Curse Icon. I gave him the Tormentor Sword because I wasn't going to give my Tomb Prince anything other than a great weapon because the Strength 6 is very useful. And I needed magical attacks in this unit for, you know, if you guys remember the Nagash fight when the, eth uh, the Ethereal stuff was inside the unit, I couldn't do anything against, excuse me, against him. So at least with the Tormentor Sword, I've got a couple attacks that could do something. And with the Dragon Helm and the Iron Curse Icon, he, he brings a little bit more defense to this unit. But his main purpose is to give me hatred. My core choices are five Skeleton Horse Archers with a banner. Yes, I'm actually starting to like these guys now. 58 Skeleton Warriors, the Fateless, with full command, light armor, and shields. 13 Skeleton Archers, the Queen's Guard, with full command. Three Chariots, Rollin' Bones, with Musician and Banner, and the Banner of Eternal Flame. And three more Chariots, the Thunder, with Banner Musician. My special choices are three Vargeists, three Medusa Stalkers, those that gaze, and my Chimerian War Sphinx. Kitty! With Fiery Roar. My rare choices are my Hyro Titan, Nad the Protector, and my Casket of Souls. My opponent's list is as follows. He has Carl's Franz Ascended. Damn it, Carl. Uh, yeah, with all the tricks and stuff like that. 
He's also got a Battle Wizard Lord. It was a level 4 Talisman of Endurance using Crown of Command wearing Laura Life Bastard. And then he's got his hero choices, which is a Captain of the Empire, who's his BSV with the Warrior Bane and Dragon Helm. And then he's got a Battle Wizard, who's a level 2 Wizard with a Dispel Scroll, Laura Beasts, and a Warrior Priest with Hand Weapon Shield. His core choices are 58 Halberdiers with Full Command, 10 Inner Circle Knights with Full Command and the Steel Standard. His special choice is 30 Great Swords with Full Command and a Banner of Eternal Flame. And his rare choices are a Hell Blaster Volley Gun, a Steam Tank, and a Celestial Hurricanum. Here are all of my spells. Now that I'm a lore master, I didn't have to roll. So yeah, just bam, 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 bam. And yes, those are not my uh, lore vampire cards. Uh, a buddy on here sent me some lore vampire cards, which I left right next to the door so I wouldn't forget them. And I forgot them because I'm awesome. So yeah, yeah. And at, right after I got those cards, I got some more cards from Unleashed Wargaming with the lore vampire. So I've got more vampire magic cards than I know what to do with. And it's a good problem to have. But yes, thank you to everybody who's sending me the cards. I really do appreciate it. Thank you, guys. I know, yes, not to be named, so I'm not naming you, but thank you very much. I did not get my opponent's spell card, so here's deployment. And to be perfectly honest with you, I wasn't afraid of anything in this list other than Carl Franz because I didn't fully understand what he did. I knew he had 10 attacks. I knew all of his attacks auto-wound if he hits, So and they do D3 plus 1 wound, so I knew he was dangerous as all hell. Uh, I knew he had a 4-up armor and a 4-up ward, and I knew I, I wanted to kill him. That That's really about it. I think he had 10 wounds, 9, 10 wounds, something like that. I don't know. But really, uh, he had a bunch of halberdiers and a bunch of great swords that I wanted to deal with, so I put my skeleton warriors into the forest. The hope there was they run into the forest, like the halberdiers or something like that, and they're no longer steadfast, you know, because the forest does disrupt you. He would still get his ranks and everything, sure, but he could never be steadfast. So if I could get him into the forest, that'd be great. Uh, I also wanted to put him in the forest there so that if the knights got froggy or Carl Franz or the, even the Hurricanum, anything that touches the forest taking dangerous terrain checks, hopefully, and, you know, exploding. So that would be bonus. Uh, the chariots are surrounding my skeleton warriors to counter charge. Oh, imagine if I could get both units of chariots into one unit. Oh, 66 strength, 4 impact hits. Oh. The war kitty is in the middle because, well, if I can get my war kitty into either of those units of infantry, it's going to be a good day because I'm going to thunder crush until my head explodes. The casket is safely tucked away in the back there to just power through anything I could. I didn't know this at the time, but Carl Franz has a 24-inch uh, leadership bubble. Had no idea, so I thought I had a chance there to take out the Hurricanum and maybe even do some damage uh, to the Halberdiers until I realized he had a 24-inch leadership bubble, so I, I pretty much gave up on that idea. I, I'm still going to try to cast a spell, but I didn't realize it during deployment. Uh, the Titan and the Archers are hanging out in the back. My General's in the back because... I wasn't sure what I was going to send him against. Um, I knew he could probably do some damage, you know, against the knights, maybe against, you know, the great swords at a halberdier unit. Uh, if I get a hold of the hurricane, that'd be glorious. But I knew at some point I was going to try to put him into the uh, into Carl Franz, just because I wanted to see how I would do against him. I knew Carl Franz had a had an initiative of seven or less. I knew that he didn't have always strikes first. And I knew my general did. And with the Sword of Antiheroes, he had six strength, six attacks. I think I needed, I think he's toughness five or six. So I knew I just needed threes or threes or fours to wound him. And then every wound that gets through, I get more. It was going to be a suicide charge because his counterattack was going to just obliterate me, I know. But I thought maybe he could do it. Especially if I could put some wounds through on Carl Franz prior to getting into combat with him. So that was the hope there. The Vargeist, they were either going to try to block him, like give him something to charge and leave him alone, or go after the volley gun, whichever uh, presented itself better. And that was that was it. That was the plan for deployment. Here's my opponent's center, which consists from left to right, his halberdier unit with his level 4 and level 2 wizard in there. Um, I think think that's it. Yeah, just his level 2 and his level 4 wizard are in with the halberdiers. His hurricanum's behind the great swords. The great swords are right next to the halberdiers, and they've got his captain and his warrior priest installed. Right next to them is the steam tank. And here's my opponent's left flank, which consists of his hellblaster volley gun, 
Carl Franz Ascended, and his Inner Circle Knights. Here's my right flank, which consists of my Vargeists, my Chariots, and my General, and my Archers, and a bit of my Titan. And here's my center, which consists from right to left of my Casket, my Skeleton Warriors with Necrotech and Tomb Prince installed. I believe my Vampire is also installed in there. My War Kitty and uh, my Chariots. Those are the ones with the Banner of Eternal Flame. You can tell because they're painted. And here are my scouts, which are just going to try to harass the Hurricane the best they can. I would have liked to get them into the Hellblaster Volley Gun, but they were on the opposite end of the table, and it was just, it was unlikely. Here's top of one after movement, and you're looking at it, I went first. The War Kitty and the Chariots move up slightly, the scouts move up just outside of the uh, Halberdier's Arc of Sight there, so that I could shoot at the Hurricane uh, the other Chariots and the Titan move up because I'm trying to bait them. I want them to try to charge because he needs an 11 or 12 to hit me, and I just didn't see that happening. Uh, I did make a mistake with my right flank Chariots there. I should not have put them close enough for the damn gun to shoot at, but that was my fault. Uh, my General moves up slightly. My Var guys pretty much stay right where they are. The Archers move up slightly, and that, that's really it. I'm just trying to bait him, that's all. I know he's got to come to me. I just need him to get there soon. Nothing happens in the magic phase. Believe it or not, uh, the 46 magic phase, nothing important really happens. Uh, I get the bubble ward off, and that's really it. Everything else was stopped cold. Uh, it did take a little bit longer than I expected it to, but it wasn't really that upsetting or anything. He was able to stop everything, and I rolled poorly on my D6 roll. So my first you know, interaction with the uh, Kane magic phase... I, 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 I thought it was going to be a big deal. I really did. I was really concerned that it was going to, you know, I was going to blow him out of the water or I was going to get every spell off, blah, blah, blah. But that random D6 thing really makes it difficult because you declare the spell and then you see how many power dice you get to throw at it and you're like, eh, I'm screwed. So, yeah, and he used a scroll at the right time. So, yeah, nothing happened in a magic phase. So, in shooting, everything shoots at Karl Franz because I need to put some wounds through on him and I put a wound through. I just won, but... He's bleeding at the beginning of one, and that's a good sign. So, then we go over here to bottom of one after movement, and they come forward. Karl Franz takes the bait and tries to charge my chariots and misses it by an inch. He needed an 11 and rolled a 10, so whoo! <laughs> that was close. Uh, other than that, though, everything else he has for, uh, fires forward with the exception of the volley gun, and uh, that, I'm okay with that. There's a better picture of Karl Franz not charging my chariots because he failed. Uh, during the shooting phase, the Hellblaster shoots at my uh, chariots, which are like an inch in range. Like, I'm an idiot. I should have measured that. But whatever. He shoots and he scores one wound on them, and that's my fault. And then, I don't remember what shoots. I think the cannon uh, on his steam tank shoots at my Titan and puts two wounds through on him. So that was almost really bad. Uh, after all is said and done, we go over here to top of two after movement, and I get a little froggy, and I charge. Uh, both units of chariots charged great swords. I needed an eight on both sides in order to hit them because they were 16 away. Only those uh, chariots on the right flank made it. The ones on the left flank, I rolled like a three, a two, and a one. It was really bad. A uh, little disappointed because I wanted to see two units of chariots slamming into one unit. Honestly, I don't know if both units would have made it. Uh, even if they both did make their leaders or, or make their uh, charge roll, there there might not have been enough frontage. But damn it, that would have been so cool either way. <laughs> so yeah, it was a half win, half fail. Other than that, things start falling back. The the skeleton warriors fall back a little bit. Kitty falls back a little bit. The titan falls back a lot. My general falls back a lot, and my var guys fired forward. Uh, Karl Franz is just outside. I'm just outside of his uh, arc of sight. And with my, what's it called, stalkers coming in right behind the steam tank, I wanted to tell that damn uh, Hellblaster Volley Gun, if he didn't shoot and kill all of my uh, Vargeist, I was going to destroy it. So, that was really about it. Again, nothing happens in the magic phase. So, yeah, little, little surprise there. Um, I guess I shouldn't be. I guess I shouldn't be. But, yeah, nothing happens in the magic phase. We're just, it's a very even magic phase now. He's got a level 4. I've got a level 4. And we're bouncing spells around, but neither of us can get any of them off. I'm trying to bring units on the table. I'm trying to do things, and I just can't. So we go into the shooting phase, and I don't do great. Uh, I ended up rolling, like, two misfires 
and an eight but I'm able to put two wounds through on the uh, steam tank, which is something. I take a wound. Now I was like one misfire. So I take a wound, just one wound on my stalkers, and I do two wounds to the steam tank. So that's something. And then we go into combat, and I flub spectacularly. I do six impact hits, only four of which actually wound. And I think he was able to save two of them. Uh, I flub my attacks. I don't kill his warrior priest. I don't hurt his B. I think I kill his BSB. I take that back. I did kill his BSB. Uh, but other than that, I just get slaughtered. His great swords beat the piss out of my chariots and demolish him. And uh, you know what? Good on him. I got his BSB, but he got my unit of chariots. So it almost didn't feel fair. <laughs> So, then we go over here to bottom of two after movement, and you're looking at it. Uh, Karl Franz runs over and exposes his flank to my vampire lord, which everybody was laughing. We were all having a good time, but that offended me that my vampire lord on a terror was so easily snubbed. Like, whatever, you're nothing to me. So, yeah, a plan started forming here. I won't lie to you. I was like, okay, so I have a charge. I have a flank. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, I'm going to charge this son of a bitch next turn. I don't care. I'm going to charge him with my general, and here's the plan. I'm going to give this, uh, with my magic phase, I'm going to concentrate everything I can on giving my general uh, plus one attack, a uh, five up ward for the abyssal terror, and then I'm going to throw as many dice as I can at the big desiccation of, uh, or whatever, incantation of desiccation to lower Karl Franz's strength and toughness by D3. I know he auto wounds on, a, you know, everything that hits. I get that. But the idea here was to make it so that I'm hitting on threes, wounding on twos, and just obliterate this ass before he can do anything. Because I'm going to go through his armor, because he's only got a four up, and with strength six, you know, I'm going to have potentially seven attacks, all at strength six, and then with red fury, I reroll all of the auto wounds. So I could potentially take Karl Franz out in one good combat, if I can just roll average and stack the uh, the the odds in my favor severely so i was looking forward to that plus you know there's always the chance that he'll fail you know his leadership check and not or if he if he gets if he doesn't get to attack back you know or flub his roll so i was gonna go for it screw it at the very least i'm gonna put a lot of damage on his ass uh other than that his uh that that was the plan that was forming there it required a, a pretty nifty magic phase but i was gonna go for it and his halberdier unit tries to charge my chariots and fails. Other than that, everything he has pretty much just kind of moves forward. There's a better picture of his halberdiers failing their charge against my chariots, and that's huge. During his magic phase, uh, he gets Wizen's Wild Form off on the Great Swords, and I was fine with that because I had no intention of doing anything to the Great Swords during this turn. Uh, they were going to be something that I was going to have to deal with with the uh, Skeleton Warriors, is the way I thought of it right there. And then there was nothing I could do about it. He got his 5 up board save off on the Halberdier unit, and that sucks. During the shooting phase, the Blaster Folly Gun kills off one of my Vargeist, but that wasn't enough. I only needed one Vargeist alive, and so that Blaster Gun is dead. And with no combat, we go over here to top of three after movement. And, a man of my word, I charge my general into Karl Franz. Not the smartest thing I've ever done in my life, but the funnest, definitely. <laughs> Uh, meanwhile, the Vargais go into the Hellblaster Polygon, and the Chariots and the War Kitty slam into the Halberdier unit because it's time for them to die. Uh, other than that, my Skeleton Warriors just kind of accept the fact that that damn uh, tank is going to run into them. My Titan moves back. Well, he doesn't really move back. He just moves in such a way that he's got a better angle on some stuff. The Casket turns to face the rest of the army, and my Archers back the hell up because I'm getting a little nervous. There's a better picture of my chariots and my war kitty slamming into the halberdier unit, and I feel pretty good about that. And there's a better picture of my vampire lord slamming into Karl Franz because it's time to kill this human and to keep him dead. And there's a better picture of my Vargai slamming into the Hellblaster because they need vengeance. During the magic phase, I get almost every spell off that I want to get off. Uh, I get plus one attack off. I get five up ward save off. I do not get incantation of desiccation off, which really upset me. I got five dice to cast it to. I just rolled too low. Yeah, I needed a 22, but even with the Titan right there and everything, I just couldn't do it, and that was discouraging. So it wasn't it wasn't optimal, but I still had seven strength six attacks, rerolling all successful wounds, or getting extra attacks for all successful wounds. So 
there was a chance there was a chance I was going to kill this bastard so I was I was still hopeful I was still optimistic and uh, during the shooting phase I slip a wound through on this thing or something happens I don't remember exactly no 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 the uh, casket goes off and I'm able to uh, do another three wounds to the tank or whatever so now it's at five which is glorious he's uh, hopefully going to die soon or at least he's half dead that's something during the shooting phase, my Skeleton Horseman archers are able to slip a wound through onto the Hurricanum, which is awesome, because now, you know, they're, they're starting to obliterate this thing a little bit, and I like that. And in combat over here, uh, this one actually didn't go terrible. I did a decent amount of impact hits. I did, like, ten, so that, that's really all I'm looking for. Uh, so that was something. Uh, a bunch of the Halberdier guys died. The problem is the War Kitty, I used Thunder Crush, and the War Kitty failed, so that kind of sucked. But... Other than that, with Thunder Stomp, I used my Flaming Breath and everything like that. I killed like 20 of these guys. I win this combat, they're steadfast, and they don't go anywhere, but it's a start, and I'll take it. Then over here, oh, I got so mad at myself, I hit the wall. <laughs> I was so mad. So I throw my attacks, and I hit six times, right? I need threes to wound, and I wound twice. Twice! Can you effin' believe it? I wound twice. I failed to wound needing threes four frickin' times. <sighs> I had this bastard. Because if those six wounds would have gotten through, he would have had a four-up ward save that he would have had to re-roll because of the other trickster shard. Six wounds would have gone through. I would have gotten six more attacks if three would have gotten through. Three would have gotten through. He'd have been he'd have been dead, and and that'd have been glorious. And uh, yeah, no, no, all the glory was taken from me because I couldn't roll well. It just drove me absolutely out of my head. Oh, I was so mad, so mad. Not at my opponent, not at anybody in particular. Just myself, just myself. Uh, so yeah, two wounds go through, Red Fury kicks in, another wound goes through, he attacks back, he does two wounds to my terror and kills my general. And, uh, the terror does a wound back, so he's got five wounds on him now. Charge, flank, and I think four wounds to his, uh, three, four, five wounds. I win this combat, I think, cause, yeah, by one, but he makes his stubborn ten, no problem. And I die inside. My general's dead. My terror's got two wounds left. But I could have had him. I could have had him had my dice not turned on me. Ah! Oh! The best laid plans, right? Then over here in combat, the Var guys just rip apart those uh, Hell, uh, uh, Hell Blaster crew. And that was glorious. So with my heart heavy, we go into bottom of three. And his knights charge my titan and make it. His steam tank charges my skeleton warriors and make it, and his great swords charge into the war kitty and make it. But I gotta be honest with you, I think that might have been a mistake. Uh, other than that, everything else he has, the hurricanum just kind of stays close to the infantry, and everything else he has is deader in combat. There's a better picture of his knight slamming into my titan and his uh, steam tank slamming into my skeleton warriors. And here's a better picture of his greatsword slamming into the war kitty. So, eh, I, 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 they still needed sixes to wound me and stuff. And my necrotech was close enough that the war kitty did have a six up regen. So, I had hope. I had hope. Uh, during the magic phase, he tries multiple times to get flesh to stone off on the halberdier unit. Not entirely worried about that because my chariot isn't really supposed to do anything. Uh, in the last combat, I forgot to mention this, I don't know why, uh, I went on an assassination mission. I went to kill off his lore beasts and his lore life caster in this unit because they were alone. So the war kitty, they, he does two killing blows, the, the crew, they do two killing blow and a wound to him at strength five. He has a five up ward save. He makes all three ward saves. Yeah, because life's not fair. And then uh, the chariot, I think, I, no, I wasn't able to do anything to his lore beast guy, uh, which is unfortunate. But uh, in this situation, he finally, after multiple tries, his level 4 is finally able to get the plus 2 toughness off on his unit, which is fine and all, 
because I let it go and I use the hex scroll and it works. His level four Laura Life Caster is now a mother effing frog, which is outstanding. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this just goes to show you, I have lots of plans, and every once in a while they work out. This one actually worked out. Felt pretty good about that. Uh, so then we go into combat, and we start off with the Skeleton Warriors, and yeah, I don't do anything to the tank, and it beats the piss out of them, which is expected on the charge. But I've weathered the charge now, and so now it's just a grind. Now I just got to keep raising Skeletons, which shouldn't be that hard. And uh, hopefully I can get a few wounds off on this stupid Steam Tank, then that, that would be great. Over here in combat, though, it's not nearly as good. The Titan gets obliterated. He does two more wounds to this poor bastard. I do nothing back. I don't roll any fours to hit. Uh, with the charge and two wounds alone, that's enough to do the last wound to him. And he falls over and dies. And that breaks my heart a little bit. He overruns. And he actually, we thought he was going to be in the, the Archers, but he actually clipped my um, Casket of Souls first. Uh, just, he hits the corner. Couldn't believe it. But yeah, his circ Inner Circle Knights hit my casket instead of the Archers. I gotta be honest, kind of wish they had hit the Archers instead. <laughs> but it is what it is. What can you do? Then we go over here. And the War Kitty. Oh my. First things first. The crew on top killing blow the frog to death. He does not make his ward save. So his level 4 Laura Life Caster is dead dead gutted on a spear thanks to the being a frog that was outstanding because he can't use his ward save because he's a frog all of his magic items cease to function so yeah killing blow he's dead outstanding right so my thunder crush works and i kill like eight more of the halberdier guys the chariot does a little bit of damage and I Thunder Stomp into the Great Swords, which was great because the Great Swords weren't able to roll any sixes into my War Kitty. Uh, I take that back. He did roll one, but I was able to regen save it, which was out friggin' standing. I owed him one from the three uh, successful, uh, what's it called? Uh, 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 what's it called? Damn it. The uh, three ward saves he made when I, in the initial charge to save that piece of garbage. But uh, yeah, yeah, even at strength five with Thunder Crush, I was able to kill like eight of the, uh, what's it called? Uh, 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 Halberdier guys. So that was pretty great. My dice really did rally for me, which I appreciated. Uh, so as you can see, though, I won this combat and the Halberdier guys broke. They rolled an 11 and the BSB is dead. So they fled, the chariot pursued, they got away. But the War Kitty turns and faces the Great Swords, who made their stubborn check. And uh, yeah, the War Kitty is now going to start pummeling him some Great Swords. His art, his, both of his mages are gone now, as far as I'm concerned, because it's my turn next, and my chariot's going to charge those bastards either off the table or I'm going to kill them. Uh, they did t lose a couple more due to dangerous terrain checks going through my uh, Skeleton Horseman Archer guys. But hey, I took care of his magic phase, I got rid of the Halberdier unit. And they're going to be off the table next turn, scoring me all those glorious points. I feel really good about that. And it's 100% thanks to the War Kitty. Uh, yes, the Chariots did help. I'll give you that. The Chariot is going to escort them off the table, which is great. But yes, very excited. Very happy. Over here, though, just because, damn it, Carl, he finishes off my terror before it even gets to an attack, and that sucks. What can you do? It was, it was, uh, you know, it was grabbing its straws anyway. He should be dead. He should be dead, but, ugh, damn it, it's a dice game. Oh, eh, well. So, we go over here to the top of four after movement, and my chariot makes good on its promise, and he escorts the halberdier unit off the table. Uh, other than that, nothing. Nothing at all. The, uh, var uh, what's it called? Vargas run over into the middle of the table because I'm going to send them into the uh, Great Swords or into the Steam Tank. I wasn't sure which yet. Uh, the Stalkers turn to look at the Hurricanum. And my Scouts look at the Hurricanum. And everything else I have is dead or in combat. During the magic phase, I get incantation and desiccation off on Carl Franz, just a negative one strength, negative one toughness, just because I wanted to be able to shoot at him with, you know, at toughness four, needing fives to wound him. I I'm, I'm just trying to make it so that he's less likely to charge into my skeleton warrior unit or my even my archers. You know, I'm just trying to put as many wounds through on this bastard as I can before it's too late. But uh, I get incantation and desiccation off, and it's a miscast six, so that sucks. You must not read from the book!
it ends up doing uh, six wounds to my unit, which really couldn't afford. Well, I guess I could afford it, but I, I would have preferred not to. So I'm down to like 39 uh, models in that unit now, and uh, I got to survive all these grind attacks. Not really looking forward to that. Then over here, uh, yeah, the Stalker's Care Bear stare at the Hurricanum, and I roll a double misfire. <laughs> so... Oh, I lose the stalker. Another one's got two wounds on him. Oh, come on. <laughs> yeah, my artillery dice might need to taste flame very, very soon. They're starting to piss me off. Luckily, my skeleton archers uh, on horseback put two wounds through on this damn hurricanum. I couldn't believe it. After all the bad luck I had with my artillery dice, my regular dice rally for me, and I slipped two th wounds through on the Hurricanum. Just absolutely glorious. So this thing's on its way out, which is nice. Then in combat over here, I don't move any of my uh, uh, characters over to deal with the steam tank because I just didn't think to do it. And I'm able to slip another wound through. So he's at six now, which is good because now it's going to be harder for him to generate multiple steam points. I won't have to deal with as many grind attacks. And as you can see, during the magic phase at some point, I was able to resurrect a few more uh, skeletons. So it's, it's helping. It's helping. Then over here in combat. Oh, the war kitty. Love the kitty. He kills. Well, the, the riders on top kill the warrior priest, which is glorious. And then the war kitty does his job against the great swords, knocking them down to about 19 guys or so. Uh, takes no damage in return. They're stubborn, make their break check, but they're taking tests. And that, that can only be a good thing. Love the war kitty. Then over here in combat, uh, the casket only takes a wound, and he does a wound back. I'm able to kill him below one of the uh, inner, inner circle knights, which is great. Uh, his charge banner wound to my uh, one wound. Uh, I'm still alive. I have like one wound left, but I'm still alive. So No, I'm sorry. He didn't do any wounds to me. He failed to wound me. So yeah, with his charge and a banner to my wound, he wins by one. I take a wound. And uh, yeah, that, that's what happened there. So borrow time. Borrow time. So, with all that said and done, we go over here to bottom of four after movement, and that that's pretty much it. As you can see, uh, after combat with the, uh, what's it called, with the uh, steam tank, I did reform just in case Carl Franz wanted to come over. I didn't want him in my flank, I wanted him in my front. Uh, other than that, his, uh, his well, nah, Carl Franz charges into my skeleton archers, which sucks, I'm going to lose my level four, but I'm hoping to hold him there for a little while, because with the... Uh, with the unit champion, I can issue a challenge and mitigate the damage. So I was really looking forward to uh, maybe surviving. Because it is bottom of four. I've only got to last five turns and I can resurrect the, un the unit champion. So hope. Uh, other than that, everything uh, his hurricane moves around a little bit just to stay further away, I guess, from a charge from the Vargeists, which I guess is smart. Uh, he didn't know what my plan was. And uh, everything else he has is deader in combat. There's a better picture of Super Carl Franz slamming into my Skeleton Archers, and that sucks. Uh, nothing worthwhile happens in his magic phase, so we go, or his shooting phase, so we go into combat, and Carl Franz decimates my unit champion. <laughs> it was funny, too, because I don't think my opponent realized that there was full command in there. Uh, so, yeah, I, I mean, I tell him when I, when I deploy, but who remembers everything you say during deployment, right? So yeah, he was like, all right, I'm putting all my attacks in your, into your character. I'm like, no, 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 no. Unit champion issues a challenge. <laughs> it's not happening. And he's like, you have a unit champion? I showed him the list. I was like, you're damn straight I do. And he was like, damn it. Call Franz easily beats the piss out of my unit champion. <laughs> oh, how funny would that have been, though, if the unit champion had slipped a wound through, huh? But yeah, the unit champion gets obliterated before he can so much as unsheath his sword, but it mitigates the damage. So with his charge and six wounds because of, you know, overkill and everything like that, to my banner uh, I, and, uh, and a rank, I take another four wounds. So I lose five or six guys. I can't remember exactly how many. Uh, the unit champion plus like five guys die, and the unit's still there, and my gener or my level four caster is still there, and Carl Franz is stuck. So I'm actually feeling pretty good about this, because next magic phase, I can keep trying to cast the little spells until I resurrect my unit champion, and do it all over again, and hopefully, you know, weather his turn, and maybe, maybe survive. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's a hope. I'll hold him there as long as I can.
Uh, but over here, unfortunately, uh, his Inner Circle Knights, even without their lances, are able to uh, slip through a whole bunch of wounds and destroy my Casket of Souls, which breaks my heart a little bit. The resulting explosion puts a wound on Carl Franz, hurts my spirit host, doing two wounds to them, doesn't do anything to the Inner Circle Knights, I don't think. And if I'm not mistaken, I think I put another wound on the Steam Tank, and uh, that that's pretty much it. In combat over here, I move most of my characters over uh, to just start wailing on the Steam Tank. He can't really attack me other than with that one attack from the little dude on the top. So I went for it. And uh, I think I put another wound through on him. Not enough to kill the Steam Tank or anything like that, but it's on its way out, so I feel good about that. Then over here, oh, this War Kitty. He's such a glorious War Kitty. He, uh, he ends up taking a wound this time. But I'm able to slip through another five wounds or something like that. I don't believe I Thunder Crushed this time because there was no point. I might have. I honestly don't remember. But uh, I win this combat. They're stubborn and they stick. So we go over here to top of five after movement. And the gloves are coming off, right? <laughs> uh, my chariot turns to look at the Hurricanum because it's time for that thing to die. The stalkers continue to stare at the Hurricanum even though it's shiny. <clears throat> The uh, scouts move over to just kind of box in this bastard. The Vargai slam into the rear of the great swords because it's time for them to die. And everything else I have is dead or in combat. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. And the spirit host that I had summoned earlier slam into the inner circle knights because now I know they don't have any magic weapons and I want them dead. There's a better picture of the spirit host slamming into the inner circle knights. And I really don't care about the spirit host because they're free. And being free is awesome. So, yeah, yeah, if uh, if he kills the spirit host, that's fine. I'm anchoring this unit there so he can't charge into my uh, archers and help Carl Franz at all. So I'm happy about that. I really like the lore of undeath. <clears throat> There's a better picture of the far guy slamming into the great swords because it's time for them to be gone. I need him dead. Over here in com or during the magic phase, I'm able to get five up ward and plus one attack off on my archers. Nothing other than just trying to resurrect skeletons and get my unit champion back up. The five up ward is nice, but it's not going to help. Unfortunately, one of those spells, I believe, is the five up ward, was a miscast. Five. No! You must not read from the book! which resulted in three of my skeleton warriors dying and Carl Franz taking yet another wound. So he's circling the drain. He's got three wounds left and I've got a little bit of time. I could still kill him. I don't know how, but it's a possibility. <laughs> uh, then over here, these mother cross-eyed bastards. Ah, uh, I roll a misfire and a two, shooting at the Hurricanum. Uh, he takes uh, three wounds. I don't do anything to the Hurricane. Uh, the Stalkers let me down this game. They really did. And then over here in combat, the Vargeists. Oh, I love my Vargeists. The War Kitty and the Vargeists combined were too much for the Great Swords. They have one guy left in the end. No, two guys left. Uh, the. Uh, not even a unit champion, just a random rank and file and a banner is all that's left after all is said and done. Needless to say, yes, they're still stubborn, but they do not make their stubborn check. They flee. The Var guys catch them no problem. They ran from the War Kitty. We randomized. And uh, the Var guys catch them no problem. And they die. So that's outstanding. Great swords dealt with. Uh, then over here, nothing any, nothing really happens. Uh, he doesn't hurt me. I don't hurt him. I win the combat. Nobody cares. Then over here, same thing. Uh, charge in a flank to banner. I win by one. They're steadfast. They don't go anywhere. However, they do make their leadership check to turn and face the spirit host. Not that that's a huge big deal, but it does take away my flank, and I, I could have used that. Then in combat over here, the unit champion eats Crow once again. Yeah, this unit's dead next turn. But you know what? They held Carl Franz up for three or four turns. That's, uh, you know, well, whatever, rounds of combat. And that's outstanding. What more can he ask for? Yeah, I'm going to lose my archers. Yeah, I'm going to lose my level four. But I've got a level one and a level, well, I've got a level one left. So I've still got some lore of undeath I could try to cast. So my magic phase is completely wiped. But... That's okay, though. That's okay. It worked out, uh, and holding him up like they did was worth it. You know, at least he wasn't able to get in anything else. So we go over here to bottom of five after movement, and there's there's not a 
ton. Um, his steam tank decides he he's like, screw it, I'm gonna kamikaze my steam tank and try to take out as much as I can. So he does. He tries to generate five steam points. He rolls like a ten, misfires, rolls a three on the D3 and explodes the steam tank. Uh, he's Hurricanum is fine. I take five wounds with my skeleton warriors. The kitty is fine. Uh, the var guys are fine. I think his inner circle knights take another wound or two and that that's really it but the steam tank is dead now so that was something there's a better picture of a steam tank getting exploded that was kind of nice and then during combat nothing happens in his magic phase because he doesn't have one anymore and his shooting phase doesn't exist so we go into combat and yeah he's able to finish off i i even issued a challenge with my level four in the vague hope that he wouldn't be able to Maybe he'd flub. Maybe I'd be able to make her ward saves. Just it was it was to stop his thunder stomps and stuff like that. It didn't matter. He was able to do nine wounds total to her and combat res vape the rest of the unit. But you know what? That was that was going to happen. We all knew it the minute we saw him charge in there. The fact that these guys held them held Carl Franz as long as they did is a miracle, and I'm I'm pleased with them. They died well. So we go over here to top of six after a movement, and I make a mistake. I was so concerned about Carl Franz charging my War Kitty and getting those points and blocking with the uh, Vargeist that, that that's what I did. I just moved the Vargeist over without declaring charge. Well, I did declare one charge. I charged with my Chariot into his Hurricanum because that was easy. I forgot to charge my Skeleton Warriors into the flank of his Inner Circle Knights completely stupid on my part i really should have done that i blame myself but i screwed up it'll happen again uh other than that nothing nothing really moves everything just kind of gets the hell away from carl franz that that was that was the plan that was stupid i really should have charged with my damn uh guys but i didn't Ugh, i'm in, i'm embarrassed there's a better picture of my chariot slamming into the hurricanum and that's a that's gotta die that's all there is to it during the magic phase, I get Van Hell's dance off on my spirit host, which is nice, just because now they're re-rolling stuff. And then in we go into combat, and sure enough, my chariot is able to obliterate the Hurricanum. Uh, it, it doesn't kill it uh, outright, it has to run it down, but it does, and that's all that's important. Then over here in combat, uh, yeah, nothing happens. Uh, I take a, I, I lose this combat by one, I flub my rolls, I don't do anything to the knights. Uh, well, I, I shouldn't say I flub my rolls. He makes his armor saves. And, uh, yeah, yeah, they don't do anything back, but they have a banner to my nothing. I take a wound, but the spirit hosts aren't dead yet. They're still holding the circle knights there. They should be dead because I should have charged my friggin' skeleton warriors into them, and I didn't, but... Ah! So, we go over here to bottom of six after movement, and being cheated of killing the war kitty, because trust me, my opponent wanted to kill the kitty. Uh, he charges the, you know, the... The, the, the backup prize of the Vargeist makes it no problem, and other than that, everything else is dead. There's Carl slamming into the Vargeists, and what can you do? It was better the 138 point Vargeist than the 230 point uh, War Kitty, right? Nothing happens in his magic shooting phase, so we go into combat, and sure enough, he destroys the poor Vargeist, which breaks my heart. He does overrun and slam into the War Kitty, but eh, it is what it is. I do try to attack with my spirit host, but I flub, so nothing happens there. Uh, no, I, actually, I think we completely forgot about the spirit host fight. It just didn't matter. Even if the spirit host died, it didn't matter because they were worth nothing. And so, boom. There you go. There's the end of the game, and that's what it looks like. Carl Franz and some inner circle knights are still alive. Other than that, I killed everything in the Empire army. I have most of my characters. I lost my lords, but I have all my heroes. I have my Skeleton Warriors, one unit of chariots, some scouts, you know, my snakes, the kitty! Oh, It was a really good fight. But you know what? We'll get to the recap in a moment, because right now it's time for a... Well, no, this game's just over. That's it, man! Game over, man! It's game over! Banners, banners, banners. Get you some banners. Look at the banners. You are never going to be able to get better banners than this. There is no company. There is no talent scout. There is no entity on the planet that's going to get you banners better than this. Custom banners for your custom army. 
You want better pain scores. You want that little edge that makes your army better than the guy next to you. Sick of running, you know, going to a tournaments and getting that pain score that's just a few points lower than the guy that literally sneezes on his army. And you can't figure out why? Get these banners and make your army really pop, really stand out. Send this guy an email, tell him what you want, and get yourself some banners. It's totally worth it. All right, guys and gals, there it is. Token Gal is back, and she's back in full operation mode of making tokens. So if you missed out before she went and got married and became Mrs. Token Gal, or however that works, uh, this is your chance. Get your tokens now. Send her an email. Send her your money. Get yourself some tokens. They're dirt cheap, solid gold quality. You're not going to be disappointed. Tell her Tremendous sent you. She'll probably know. But, uh, yeah, get these tokens. They're so much better than just using dice. They're so much easier to remember everything. You don't have to worry about your cards getting lost, stolen, ripped, torn, whatever. And, you know, they're glass beads, cool high-def pictures. Totally worth it. Get yourself some tokens. You won't regret it. That's right, guys. As you saw from the pictures, Unleashed Wargaming is now doing magic cards. As you can see, not only magic cards, but phenomenal magic cards. Laminated on thick cardstock, photoshopped, so that it's real, real sharp pictures. Uh, the words are easy to read. It's real obvious. They're numbered, the casting value, the type of spell it is. And they are so unique. They are beautiful magic cards. I have every intention in the world of sending just all the orders I can get to this guy when 9th edition comes out to give me a whole set of the magic cards because these are amazing. Not only does this guy do great painting, so if you want your models painted or you need something painted uh, and you want it pr painted at a real good standard, at a professional standard for a damn good price, contact this guy send him an email get yourself some cards get yourself your army painted you won't regret it let him know tremendous sent you so in the end we totaled up the points and i ended up getting 2025 for him or from him and he ended up getting 1765 out of me for a difference of 260 which means lord tremendous is victorious <laughs> I ended up losing my Vampire Lord. Oh, that broke my heart and my spirit. My High Lich Priest, that hurt too, but they, they died well. One unit of Chariots, flooding bastards. My Skeleton Archers, they died well. My Vargas, they died well. My Titan, didn't die quite as well. And my Casket, eh, it happens. The Empire ended up losing his Battle Wizard Lord, his Warrior Priest, his Captain, his Baby Wizard, his Halberdiers, his Hurricanum, his Great Swords, his Steam Tank, his Hellblaster Volley Gun, and almost Karl Franz. Oh, I almost got him. That drives me crazy. Oh, the best laid plans. I just needed to roll average. But what can you do? My dice were high and low. They were, they're, they're rolling better than they did before I burned them. So, you know, I can't win them all. But uh, I won this game in the end, even though he had Carl Franz ascended, so I felt pretty good about that. Uh, but you know what? I really love the close games. I love not knowing who's going to win until the very end. Uh, that was great. It really was. And yeah, yeah, I have no complaints. If, uh, you know, if things didn't work out the way they did, it would have been a lot more one-sided, sure. But I love the close games. I really do. And in my opinion, the Legion rules and stuff like that really make it... Uh, make the games closer. I, I, I'm loving it. How about that? War Sphinx, though. Oh, my God. Decimating the Halberdiers. Taking down the great swords, Living the entire game. Love the War Kitty. Absolutely love him. Flubbing my wound roll on Karl Franz. I died inside. Oh, I had him. I had, you know what it's like? It's like you're, you're deep sea fishing, and you've been trying to land the fish for like the past 25 minutes. And then just as you see the fish, just as it's about to come onto the damn boat, and it's a world record breaker, the line snaps and you get cracked in the face with the pole. That's what it felt like. Just to put it in perspective for you. 
Uh, but yeah, Carl Franz is a monster in close combat. He is terrifying. Uh, if I hadn't flubbed that wound roll, I think I would have been able to drop him, which is cool to know that a regular Lord Choice, well, regular, a vampire Lord Lord, Lord Choice, kitted out for combat, could potentially take Carl out no problem. But uh, it was kind of neat. It was kind of neat to see that and realize that even though he's a special character, he's not a god, no matter what the fluff might say. Uh, but how about that new intro? I'm sorry, I know I keep bringing it up, but I am so happy with that. I can't even begin to tell you. I'm going to try, but it's hard to just put into words how excited I am about the intro. Uh, Unleash Gaming, you are my absolute favorite person in the world right now. Thank you so very much for that new intro. It is absolutely fantastic. Thank you for the cards, too, and everything. That's awesome. You're, you're, you're awesome. Everybody, buy stuff from him. This guy has got more talent in his little finger than most of us have in our entire bodies, and that's carrying around a backpack. Uh, seriously, look at his channel. Go check him out. If you haven't bought something from him already, you are wrong. Yes, I said it. You are wrong so yeah thanks again man that intro is just fantastic but uh i really did enjoy seeing the new magic rules it made the magic phase last a lot longer i'll give you that, that uh, but again that's not a huge factor to me because i i basically slate an entire day for gaming i understand people have only so much time to play and honestly if i was giving advice about the the rules and stuff like that which ones to use which ones not to use if you have a specific amount of time to use i would probably not use the uh cane magic rules in my games uh just simply because of the time constraints but since i dedicate an entire day to this i don't care the longer magic phases i i don't understand what people are talking about with the tactics thing you know oh it makes it so much you know simpler now blah blah no no what the hell are you talking about you have to think now all right, I'm going to try to cast this spell, but I, I do I want to cast it now or do I want to wait a little bit? Because there's a chance I'm only going to roll one power die to cast this spell, and I don't know if I want that spell gone yet because my opponent needs to know that that threat is there. And if it's gone immediately, he might dispel something that he normally would have let through because he was worried about that particular spell. And now, or do I throw two dice at this? Do I throw three dice at this? Because I could get it off with two, but he would be able to easily dispel it unless he rolls a one or a two then maybe i can't are you kidding me the tactics in the magic phase have gone up through the roof because you got to factor in not only trying to fake out your opponent trying to do you know a, a triage with what spells you want to get off what spells you would love to see to go off and what spells you absolutely need to have to go off you have to factor in the fact that you might not get enough power dice from it. So how do you turn that around in your favor? What magic items do you have that can help boost the, you know, the fact that you're going to, or the, the potential of this magic phase? Are you kidding me? It makes it rock, paper, scissors. What the frick game are you playing? <laughs> I really, really expected it to be completely worse. And this magic phase thing, I like it. I like it a lot. So I'm sorry, guys. I know I seem to be just the, the, the fanboy bandwagon guy, but honestly, I don't see what you're complaining about. <laughs> just don't. Uh, but this was a great game, fun opponent, and I'm definitely looking forward to the rematch. Well, guys, this has been one hell of a battle report. A lot of firsts. I know it's longer than usual, but oh well. Uh, yeah, just an uh, amazingly good game. Amazingly fun battle report. So many firsts. Saw Carl Franz. First time using the magic phase. The, ama the debut of the amazing new intro. I'm a happy tremendous. And uh, as always, if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, or complaints, feel free to put them in the comment section below. And I love you guys. Thanks.